In this video, meet a couple of key players from the leadership team at the Best Claim Solutions and learn about this insurance industry recruiting powerhouse, including what makes the best claims different and how they support their adjusters. So sit back and relax and enjoy getting to know the Best Claim Solutions. Hello, my name is Armando Andrade. I'm the Executive Vice President of Claims, and I also have some ownership over our warranty division. So I began my career many years ago um, working with a major carrier. Uh, spent 17 years, of uh, the first 17 years of my career working with this carrier. And during my time there, I had the opportunity to work in many different capacities. Started my career as an auto processor. Shortly thereafter, went over to the auto claim rep side of the business. And then at that point, I went and ventured into the property side of the business. Completely different world from auto. But I'll tell you, in the moment, you know, you was afraid, scared of the new opportunity, not knowing, which is something that I've taken with me throughout my career, right? It's something that I try to remember as I'm coaching and leading others, you know, that first, you know, first opportunity for them and where their mind is and, wh and what's going on in their heads. I joined the Best Claim Solutions about four years ago and started out my career here as the vice president of the catastrophe segment of the business. Um, shortly thereafter, I was promoted and basically took on the entire claims division and the rest has been history. One of the things that we pride ourselves on at the Best Claim Solutions is really setting our people up for success. Um, one of the things that I remember one of my mentors telling me many moons ago was that people don't care what you know until they know that you care. And that really is the true essence of what we do. That is what is weaved through our culture through the everything that we do, every interaction that we have. It's really about that care for the adjuster from the time that we deploy them to the time that they get released from the assignment. So one thing that I look for in my leaders is, is, is are people who are looking to have an imprint on the lives of the, of the people that they lead. This is a very unique industry where on the surface, it really seems like it's really transactional, right? It seems like I get deployed, I go out, I handle some claims, I get released, I go home, and wait for them to call me again. But one of the things that I've found is that this is an industry really where you can have a major impact on the lives of many, right? You're dealing with, our adjusters and our leaders are dealing with people most of the times at a time where it's the most difficult time in their lives. So having that care that we basically emulate and, and transferring that to the adjuster is only going to transfer over to the customer that they're interacting with. So everything we do is designed in that bubble. It's let me make sure that you have everything you need in order to be successful. Make sure you have the tools. Make sure you have the confidence that when you are interacting with these customers that you can be successful in delivering whatever the promise is of a particular client. I think one of the biggest misnomers is that a lot of these adjusters can go work for any company. And although they may come and work for us for one assignment, we found that they tend to want to come back and work for us because of that care factor that I just talked about. Um, they're not just a number to us. And we treat them like family from their first deployment. Again, like I go back to, let's make sure we're setting them up for success, which is giving them the ability and the tools to do their job, which is ultimately impacting their bottom line, which is they want to be able to go home and take the most amount of money home with them as possible. So we're setting them up and giving them best practices, not only from a claim handling perspective, but also the day in the life of being a claim adjuster. When an adjuster is deployed with us, we provide so many layers of support. There's, before they even come out to, to work with us, there's orientations that they go through, there's certifications that they grow through. And a lot of these things are set up so that when they do get that first assignment, they're not looking at this thing like a deer in headlights. They have some foundational understanding of what to expect, what the claim lifestyle, uh, claim handle lifestyle looks like, and also what the life cycle of a claim looks like. So we provide training, we provide on the job training for them, and then we also have a lot of centralized functions for them as well, so they can phone in and get like a, a you know, call like a trainer line or, or um, reach out to someone to assist with many different things, letter writing or um, completing an estimate. 
there's a number of different things that we can provide and we do provide again ultimately circling that closing that loop and going right back to that care factor and setting them up for success part of this part of our culture is that we want to keep our justice abreast with all the new and uh, trending technology so as we get specific client related training or even just technical technological specific training that we know will enhance their abilities we're reaching out to them proactively even if they're not deployed with us we're reaching out to them and offering them discounts or programs or training that we may specifically be hosting ourselves just to make sure that again we're keeping them ahead of the curve so that they can be the best adjuster they can be ultimately Hi, my name is Amber Bannister. I am the Vice President of Compliance here at The Best Claim Solutions. The adjuster process from start to finish when it comes to the compliance piece has really become hands-on. Um, you look at the onboarding aspect and you look at the licensing aspect. You're assigned somebody from start to finish. Um, that is your person to go to. You have the entire team, but you will have your one go-to person who will help you with your I-9s, who will help you with your background if you have run into any background problems who will also help you with your licensing from start to finish. There's never a time where the adjuster is gonna feel alone. They're always gonna know that somebody's there to help them through the process. Um, even if it's just, can you provide me the phone number to the Department of Insurance? Or if it's, can you help me get this information from the court? Because I did do this back in 1986, but I'm a better person now, you know, I'm really working on my life. That's the thing that we pride most with the compliance department is really helping these adjusters, building those relationships. We have adjusters who haven't been on assignment with us in years, but they are still reaching out to us like, hey, can you help me renew this? And we help them over the phone renew the license or send them step-by-step -step instructions because they're trying to remain active and be marketable for not only our firm, but other firms out there as well. They just want to keep their licenses active and we're here to help them. And we've built those strong relationships over the years. Uh, we have relationships with candidates that call us when it's their son's birthday and let us know that now they want to become an adjuster. Can you please help them? How can I get them certified? So it's really become a hands-on experience. Monitoring of the adjuster's licenses is done weekly. Um, as soon as an adjuster's license begins to expire, we are sending reminders 90, 60, and 30 days out. We send weekly reminders from there on out just to make sure they never hit that expiration date. Uh, upon expiration, we are sending out payroll deductions because a lot of the adjuster's ex licenses expire within the same month. So sometimes they're faced with $1,000 to $2,000. From there, we're offering them payroll deductions and we break it up into sometimes as many as four payrolls so they aren't hit with that significant amount up front. Um, and then from there, we're monitoring the activation of the license. So as soon as we submit the renewal, then that's where we're monitoring it day in and day out to make sure that the Department of Insurance actually renews it. If they do not, then we're contacting the Department of Insurance to see, hey, what's going on? How can we assist this adjuster with getting the renewal process? Is there something missing? Are there continuing education classes out of date? What can we do to get the adjuster's license up and running and remain active? The biggest piece is we don't want these adjusters having to get off work, make phone calls on their own, really go through the hassle of doing that. We're really taking that on ourselves and helping them through it. We may have to reach out to them for documentation, um, court documents, whatever's holding up the process and get that over to the Department of Insurance, but we're making it as smooth and as simple as can be for these adjusters. So when adjusters come on and they don't have all of the licenses that they need for a specific assignment or um, deployment, what the compliance team does is they will reach out to the adjuster, they'll let them know what licenses they're lacking, we will assist them with the application process from start to finish. So every question that they're asked on the insurance producer database, we will ask them those questions, we'll get all that information and we'll take it from start to finish for them. If the Department of Insurance needs any additional information, we will obtain that from them as well. We'll provide that to the Department of Insurance and we track the process from start to finish. Once the license becomes active, we will let the adjuster know, we let the client know, and then from there we start tracking it for renewal process as well. So as soon as it becomes active, it's in our system and we're tracking it and watching the renewal. We also offer the payroll deductions for this as well. So if somebody needs to get 10 licenses for their upcoming assignment, we will offer them the payroll deduction for this so they're not hit with that um, 
right when they start working. So we will run into adjuster situations where a Department of Insurance is telling us, nope, this, this adjuster cannot obtain this license because of X, Y, and Z. From there, we really like to take it hands-on and find out why. Why are you denying them? Is this you know, something from the past? We kind of dig into the situation, get with the adjuster, gather all the information needed to make this license become active. If there is a time where it can't become active, then we get with the adjuster, we figure out how can we solve this issue. Sometimes it is that we have to reach out to courts, we have to reach out to you know, the bigger, the higher ups. It's not such an easy process, but we do everything in our power to get that license active because we know it makes the adjuster more marketable in the future and it meets our client's needs. Thank you for watching. There's only one thing left for you to do right now, and that is to go to thebestclaims.com and begin the onboarding process. Again, that's thebestclaims.com. Thank you so much for watching this special presentation and have a great storm. This is Adjuster TV.